In this series of modules from Little Fuse University, learn how Little Fuse, the global leader in circuit protection, can help you design electrical safety into your facility by utilizing our extensive experience in helping customers improve their electrical systems and safety of installations. Our technical expertise and capabilities combined with innovative products can reduce your electrical hazards while increasing electrical safety. Codes and standards committees continue to build on the growing trend to increase safety and little fuse products, including current limiting fuses, high resistive grounding systems, and arc flash and other protection relays, allow you to become compliant and maintain compliance with these regulations. Be sure to review the entire list of available topics included in this Little Fuse University series of modules for more ways to design electrical safety into your facility. In this module from the Little Fuse University series, Electrical Safety by Design, we look at how achieving selective coordination in your facility can improve electrical safety while also reviewing the various benefits of a selectively coordinated electrical system. To begin, this module builds on our discussion in an earlier module in which we reviewed how designing current limiting fuses into a system or replacing non-current limiting fuses still being used can help lower hazards and improve safety. Using such fuses can also assist in achieving selective coordination for your facility, which simplifies troubleshooting and minimizes downtime. Now I'll turn things over to Ken, who will discuss selective coordination in more detail. The other advantage of using current limitation is that it aids in selective coordination. So what is selective coordination? Well, again, according to the NEC, basically selective coordination means that the fuse or the circuit breaker closest to the fault opens up without opening up the fuse or the circuit breaker that feeds it. So you don't have blackout conditions that can occur if there's a fault downstream somewhere. In fact, uh, selective coordination is actually mandated by the NEC for things like emergency systems and standby systems and elevator circuits, uh, health care facilities, and in 2005 they added a new one called critical operation power systems. Those, those are for buildings that must operate during national emergencies like a 9-11 a and so on. This is a slide that shows what can happen if you do not have selective coordination. If you had an arc flash or a short circuit that occurred downstream here, as you can see, if you don't have a selectively coordinated system, it will propagate up, it'll open up the fuse or the circuit breaker above that, that can open up the fuse or breaker above that, and that will open up the main fuse feeding the whole building. So if you're not selectively coordinated, guess what? The whole building gets shut down and you don't know where the problem is. You don't know where the fault is. So most, uh, some of you who are maintenance people will understand that this is a very difficult uh, situation to troubleshoot. Where do you go look for the problem? Because everything is off. If you do have a selectively coordinated system, if you have a fault that occurs at some point, well, just the fuse or that circuit breaker right uh, above that feeds that circuit will open up and leave everything else operating. So you don't have a blackout condition, the rest of the, the equipment, the building, the facility is up and running, and you can quickly identify the problem and fix it and return back to uh, service. Here's a chart that shows if you're using current limiting fuses, as long as you maintain a certain ratio from the line side fuse, which is the fuse feeding the circuit, and the load side fuse, that, that's the circuit that the line side fuse is feeding, as long as you maintain a certain ratio, then you are assured of selective coordination under any condition. For example, if you had a 30 amp fuse shown there feeding a, an individual circuit somewhere, if you're using an RK1 fuse, 30 amp, then and an RK1 fuse feeding it, then you have to maintain a ratio of 2 to 1. So the next chart shows the ratio that must be maintained in order to assure that if a, an arc flash or, or short circuit occurs down where you see it there, only that fuse will open up, leaving all the other circuits operating. However, if you were to change the fuse, let's say you change the loads, the 30 amp fuse, to an RK5 fuse rather than an RK1 fuse. Well, according to the chart you see here, then you have to maintain what's called an 8 to 1 ratio. In other words, the downstream fuse has to be uh, 8 times less than the upstream fuse. So if you have a 30 amp, uh, originally had a 30 amp fuse there, that means the upstream fuse cannot be 60, it would have to be 240. But 240 is not a standard current rating, so you'd have to use the next one highest, which is a 250 amp fuse. 
So as long as you maintain those ratios, then you still have selectively coordinated system. Obviously, though, if you are replacing an RK1 fuse, make sure you replace it with an RK1 fuse uh, instead of an RK5 fuse. Otherwise, you may lose your selective coordination. The other benefits of selective coordination is that it aids in, uh, aids in continuous operation of critical circuits. You have less downtime. It el uh, reduces or eliminates blackouts, as we've talked about earlier. It increases safety and reliability of the system, increasing safety certainly by causing, as we saw earlier, uh, you can go from an RK5 down to an RK1 and reduce the incident energy significantly. It minimizes uh, equipment damage and downtime. It increases productivity. It speeds restoration of the faulted circuits, and it reduces the arc flash hazards. Now, if you're not using uh, fuses and you're using circuit breakers in your system, uh, here's a chart that shows uh, when you do what's called a coordination study to assure whether or not your system is selectively coordinated. And this uh, chart shows the effect of a, a large uh, power breaker. The dark black lines there you see represent a 3,000 amp power type breaker. That would be the large breaker, let's say, feeding a, a complete building. Downstream from there, there was a 225-amp molar case breaker, uh, and that's represented there by the purple you see there. Now, when you lay the time current curves on top of each other, you, this, this is what you see. Now, it depends on what the available fault current is. For example, if the fault current happens to be 2,500 amps, then as you can see there, only the 225 amp circuit breaker would open. In fact, it would o could open in as little as 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second or less. If the fault current is, let's say, 10,000 amps, then that circuit breaker actually shows that it, it may open in as little as one cycle. However, if the fault current is 25,000 amps, as you can see there, then the possibility is that not only the 225 amp circuit breaker will open, but also the main breaker, the 4000 amp breaker, may open uh, under those conditions. So again, this system basically selectively coordinated as long as the fault current stays under 10,000 amps. If the, if the fault current exceeds 10,000 amps, then you may not have a selectively coordinated system. So make sure you check uh, your system out and adjust the circuit breakers properly so that you uh, maintain selective coordination. Although circuit breaker manufacturers publish ratio tables similar to those that fuse manufacturers have used for years, it has traditionally been more cumbersome and requires you to calculate bolted fault currents or overlay time current curves in order to determine if your system is selectively coordinated. Fuses are easily coordinated with upstream circuit breakers but circuit breakers with upstream fuses requires considerably more engineering and design work to determine fault currents, overlay curves, and factoring in a number of other variables. For more information, please visit our website, follow us on social media, or call our technical hotline. Thank you for your interest and for taking the time to review this module. In this module, we learned the benefits of designing in and maintaining selective coordination throughout your electrical system. There are design considerations when using current limiting fuses over circuit breakers, but either way, achieving selective coordination will increase safety and system reliability while minimizing component damage and downtime. Please be sure to look at the other modules in this series to learn even more about designing electrical safety into your facility.